Let's get the MobyLinked TNC connected to your Linux computer. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. So before we start configuring things on the computer, we need to make sure the audio uh, input and output settings are correct inside the MobiLink. So from the MobiLink app, go ahead and touch on your MobiLink device. It'll ask you if you want to connect and go ahead and press connect. Once this opens up, the first thing we need to do is click on the audio input settings. And you'll see that I have no audio there uh, on the top, uh, indicated by that solid gray bar. So I'm going to start turning up the volume on the radio, and you can see a little bit there. We still need to go a little bit more. We want to get it uh, closer to the right-hand side of that. So I'm just increasing the volume little by little until I find that sweet spot. Still a little bit more. We don't want to go too much here, but we want it Maybe about right there should be good. Once you're finished setting the output, let's go uh, back. So let's click the configure button. And then let's look at the audio output settings. Now you've got a couple of choices up here at the top. So choose simplex or multiplex depending on your radio. And then go ahead and tap transmit. You should see the radio go into transmit mode and that lets us know that everything is configured correctly. So now we can go ahead and I'm gonna click disconnect in the MobiLink app. You definitely don't want it connected or you won't be able to connect to it from the computer. So now let's go ahead and jump over to the computer and start configuring things there. Okay, so I'm going to be using a Raspberry Pi running bullseye, but this should work uh, not only on the Raspberry Pi, but it should work on an x86 box, uh, as long as that's a Debian base. Something like Mint or Ubuntu, these commands should be very similar. The first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and click on the Bluetooth icon up in the top right corner uh, for the Raspberry Pi and click on Add Device. You'll have to give it a minute while it searches for nearby devices. Once it has found your MobiLink TNC, go ahead and highlight that and click Pair. You'll have to wait for just a couple of minutes while it pairs, and then you'll get a box that says Pairing Successful, but this device has no services which can be used with the Raspberry Pi. This is exactly what we want and to be expected. Next thing we need to do is go ahead and open up the terminal window. Once the terminal window opens up, we're going to run HCI tool space scan. Press return and give it just a couple of minutes while it scans and looks for that Bluetooth device. And that scan should return your MAC address here and tell you the name of the device. If by chance it doesn't grab that information on the first scan, uh, there have been occasions in the past where I've had to run that scan a couple of times before I could get everything to work correctly. Now that we have that MAC address, we can go ahead and connect to the MobiLink from the computer. We're going to do that by running sudo space, and let me get that out of the way, rfcom space connect space forward slash dev forward slash rfcom zero. Now you can choose a number other than zero right here if by chance you have other things running on your system. So it won't make any difference if we choose one, uh, if we choose two, or if we choose nine right here. I use zero just for simplicity's sake. And we want to uh, give it another space. Now we're going to copy the MAC address that we scanned for just a second ago, and we're going to paste it into this line. Now, a word here about connecting to different MobiLinks because the commands are different depending on which MobiLink you have. If you have the MobiLink TNC2 or the TNC4, you can just run this command here. The TNC3 used uh, something that was not a default channel of six. So if you're using a TNC3, you want to put a six out here at the end. Since I'm using the TNC4, I'm not going to put that out at the uh, out at the end of that command. We'll go ahead and run this command, and you should see connected, 
uh, dev rfcom0 and it gives you the MAC address on channel 1. So again, uh, the TNC4 and the TNC2 both use channel 1. The TNC3 is the oddball of the bunch which uses channel 6. Now that we've got this connected, we can go ahead and start configuring uh, both Yak and Exaster, whichever one you want to choose. We're going to walk through both of those setups today. The main thing we don't want to do is we don't want to press Control c right now uh, to hang up this connection. So we're just going to minimize that terminal window. And let's go ahead, I tell you what, we'll tackle Exaster first. So I'll go ahead and get Exaster open. And I've already done just a bit of basic configuration. I got my map to display in Exaster. And I have uh, configured my call sign and set my home location, which you can see right here. But the main purpose of this video is configuring the interface that we need to work with the TNC. So from the menu, I'm going to go ahead and click Interface and then Interface Control. You'll get this dialog box that pops up. And the next thing we need to do is click on Add. When this box pops up, after you've clicked on Add, we want to click on Serial Kiss TNC. We'll go ahead and click the Add button right below it, and we get yet another pop-up box. This is where we want to configure things to talk to that MobiLink. Now, I'm going to cover the basics of it. I'm not going to go through every single option here because that's all going to depend on what you want to set up. In this particular case, I'm going to uncheck Allow Transmitting. I don't want this one to digipeat. The one thing I do need to do is right here where it says TNC port, we're going to give it that forward slash dev forward slash RF com zero. And that's the same port that you saw in the terminal window just a minute ago. So that comes from right here. Again, you can configure this to meet your specific needs. The next uh, box down through here is iGate options. So we can disable those. We can allow uh, different types of transmits. We can also set the path down here, uh, but we don't need to do any of that for this particular demonstration. The main thing I want to do is get connected to the MobiLink and verify that it works. So we need to click OK once we've typed in this forward slash dev forward slash RFCOM zero. Now we need to highlight that serial KISS TNC connection and click on start. You should see this change to device zero up. Once we've got that, we've got the interface control configured for the MobiLink TNC. Let's go ahead and give that a quick test. I'll go ahead and grab my HT and get a transmit beacon from it. And let's be certain that it shows up on the map. We should see that here in just a second when the radio transmits, roughly right here in this area. And there we go. It just received the packet from my HT so we can confirm that Exaster has been configured correctly. Next, let's tackle Yak. Just like before, I've already done a little bit of basic setup to Yak as far as pulling in my maps and setting uh, my call sign here. So let's go ahead and go up to File, Configure, and Expert Mode. Once the Configure dialog box pops up, we need to click on the Ports tab, and then we'll choose Add right down here at the bottom. Once the Add Port dialog box opens, we're going to come up to this device name. We're going to click on the drop down, and you will see that forward slash dev forward slash RFCOM zero. We'll go ahead and choose it. I'm going to leave the baud rate set to 9600, and I'm going to give it my call sign here. Once again, you can enable or disable transmit, and you can choose which paths you want to use. Be sure that the APRS protocol is chosen, which it is by default, and let's click Save. You'll see that it is already enabled once we click the Save button, assuming that there's no errors. We can go ahead and close out of this window, and once again, I'm going to press the Beacon Transmit on my HT. We'll give it just a second to transmit, and you'll see that it popped up the location for my HT right here in the center of the map. So that proves that Yak is receiving correctly using that MobiLink TNC. 
Now, once you're finished and you're done for the day, you can just open this box up here and press Control C to hang up that connection. You will have to reestablish that though before your next session. Thank you guys for tuning in today. If you found this information helpful, be sure to leave us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.